good. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. How's everyone doing out there in Facebook Live land? Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice and be, and be glad in it. And welcome to Advancing God's Kingdom Ministries. Amen. God, we thank you and we just honor you on this morning. I thank you, Lord God, for just what you're going to do in this place on today. Right now, I want to read a scripture out of Psalm 121. Amen. It says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord watches over you. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. Amen. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. I don't care what you're going through. God says, I'm watching over you. I'm watching over your life, amen. I'm watching over your life and I'm protecting you. I'm, I'm sustaining you, Lord. And I thank you right now that we have a father who keeps his promises. He keeps his word this morning, amen. That is why we can lift our eyes up to him and praise him this morning because he is faithful. He is faithful to watch over his word. He is faithful to watch over his promises. He is faithful to watch over us. He is faithful. We serve a faithful God this morning. No matter what we see, no matter what comes our way, our God is faithful. No matter what traps the enemy sets for us, our God is faithful. No matter what life throws at us, our God is faithful. And he watches over our lives. This very second, God is watching over our lives. And so, Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We adore you. We thank you for watching over us, Lord. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you that your eye is always on us, Lord God. We thank you that we can look to you, the one who helps us, the one who keeps us, the one who keeps providing for us, the one who sustains us in the midnight hour, the one who wipes away all of our tears. Lord God, we thank you right now that we're never out of your sight. We're never out of your care. We're never out of the sight of your love, Lord God. And we thank you. We thank you, Lord God. We embrace your love this morning. We embrace the love that you have for us this morning. Not because of our work, but because of the finished work of the cross. We say thank you, Lord God. We bless you. We honor you. We thank you. We thank you for keeping us from all time. We thank you for watching over our lives. We thank you that you watch our coming and our going. And it's in Jesus' mighty name, we give you thanks, praise, and amen. Let's give our God a hand clap of praise. A hand clap of praise for his faithfulness. For his faithfulness. For his love and his kindness and his compassion. In Jesus' name. And his faithfulness is security. It's a security deposit for us. So even though there are things that are going on in the world that seem insecure, even though we may be feeling insecure, God's faithfulness is a security deposit. And it means that we can give our all to him. We can continue coming to him. We can continue dropping everything, all of our insecurities, to a very secure God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
see a friend and you go to embrace them, you don't run with stuff in your hands. When you embrace and you hug somebody that you're really looking forward to seeing, you give them your all. And you give them the full range of your body. And that's what God is calling us to do. He's saying drop all of the insecurities, drop everything that happened this week, drop everything that is trying, the enemy is trying to use against you. And he said drop it at my feet and come to me and embrace me. Bring your all to me so that I can complete it, so that I can fix it, so that I can work it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you.
not an imitation. We don't want some a mockery. We don't want a substitute. But we just want you. We just want God. We just want you, Lord. Nothing else will do. We just want you. Hallelujah. We just want you this morning, Father. We just want you. But the good news is you want us to. The good news is you want us to. And you show us how much you want us by extending forgiveness. You tell us that we're forgiven on the front end. Thank you, Father. And then you keep working this revelation of forgiveness in our hearts throughout our journey. And as we grow in our understanding of all that Jesus has done for us, you, his one sacrifice, you, his blood offered up on our behalf, you made Jesus who knew no sin to be sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God in Christ this morning. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. We are forgiven. We are not trying to be forgiven. We are not looking for forgiveness. We are forgiven. So everything that's trying to stop us from coming to you, every roadblock has already been removed. Every obstacle has already been replaced. Amen. Everything that has tried to stop us. You want us, we want you. You tell us that through Christ, forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to us. Through him, we are justified from everything that the law of Moses could never justify us from. And because Jesus sat down at your right hand, I give some of us permission to sit down in forgiveness. Yes. Sit down in love. Thank you. Sit down in peace. Mm -hmm. Sit down in rest. Sit down in favor. Mm -hmm. Sit down in humility. Mm -hmm. Sit down in meekness. Mm -hmm. Sit down in kindness. Mm -hmm. Sit down in patience because of the work of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Our sin has been taken away, friends. Our debt has been paid. Now we have access as we worship you this morning. Come on, we worship you. We just receive. Come on, we receive, we receive, we receive. Come on, we worship you. We honor you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. Nothing in our hands, nothing in our hearts, no hindrances. We spirits are the secret place. Amen. We don't have to be afraid of your light and your love. Your holiness works on our behalf because of the work of your son. We bless our city today. Father, you said that this land would sing. And so we just agree and we declare that over the city of Lansing, you're singing over us. You're singing over the business arena. You, you're singing over the political arena. Yes, you're man. singing over the educational arena. Yes. You're singing, amen, over the uh, family arena. You're singing, Lord. The song of the Lord, the word of the Lord goes forth. 
We thank you that the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bless our city. Yes, sir. We want the king of glory to come in. We invite you into every arena. We invite you into Michigan State. We invite you into General Motors. We invite you into the state of Michigan. Every single place that you have planted your children, we invite you into Everett and Sexton and Waverly and East Lansing, amen, and Hope and Mason. We invite the King of Glory. Be lifted up, O ye gates. Be lifted up, O ye ancient doors, that the King of Glory can come in with his agenda. Yes, Lord. It's his agenda. That's what we give ourselves to. Not just to our king, but to his agenda, the kingdom. We give ourselves fully to the kingdom. We seek it first. We grow in understanding. And we demonstrate it. We sow it. We grow into it. And we just receive fresh grace today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 The word of the Lord says that all intercession, prayer, and thanksgiving be made for kings and those in authority Mm -hmm. over us, that we may live peaceable and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. We thank you for our president this morning. We make intercession for him. We thank you, Lord, for covering his family. We thank you for the work of Christ. We pray that he doesn't resist what you're doing, but that he's open, that he yields himself to you, that he yields himself to you. We declare healing over his body. We thank you for your grace. And we thank you that he embraces the wisdom that you give. That ultimately, you would be glorified in his life. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. I'm Pastor Mark with my wife, Pastor Jackie, and our worship team. Amen. And our leaders, we're excited to be with you this morning. Amen. If you can turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 4. Amen. Proverbs chapter 4. Amen. Home is where the heart is. Home is where the heart is. Amen. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. I find in my life that if you look at where I sow, you will also see where I grow. Another way to say it is, (laughs) if I want to know where I'm growing, All I have to do is look at where I'm sowing. Whether it's me sowing into me or whether it's me allowing someone to sow into me because we only grow where we sow. (laughs) And if there is no sowing, there can be no growing. Trying to grow without sowing is mental ascent. But truly, amen, if we want to know what areas of our life, if we want to be aware of what areas, amen, that we are believing God for growth in, we must look at what is being sown into us. Because we only grow what we sow, amen? Amen. Amen. Home is where the heart is, amen. It starts in the home, amen. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1, amen, verses 1 and 2. It says, listen, my sons, listen, my children, listen, my sons and my daughters, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. Listen, my children, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and also gain understanding. I, as a father, give you sound learning, 
So do not forsake my teaching. Don't blow it off. Amen. When this, this term here for fathers, it's not talking about just a male. It's really a term that's talking about parenting. Amen. Listen to the parenting that I have placed in your life. Listen to those that I have put into your life. Amen. That can parent, that can sow. Because again, wherever we sow is where we grow. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. Solomon is giving us insight into where the journey for wisdom starts. Solomon, a man, is taking us back into his childhood to understand where was wisdom first deposited, where was wisdom first sown, and where a man did wisdom begin to take root in his life? And it's interesting because wisdom always starts with somebody outside of us. Wisdom always starts with somebody outside of us. Amen. Amen. Chapter 2, verse 1. My son, accept my words. Amen. Chapter 1, verse 10. My son, if sinners entice you, do not give in to them. Verse 15, my son, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their path. Amen. Wisdom is something that is imparted into someone that has what we don't have, but what we have is the ability to listen to them. We have the ability, amen, to take heed to what it is that they're saying. Amen. And so notice what he says here. Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. And I'm so glad that he said a father, a mother, amen. The, the first eight or nine chapters of this book is very clear that in our childhood, it is important that we have fathers and mothers and people of wisdom and life experience, people of stature, people that are disciplined, people that are consistent, people that are congruent, people that have made mistakes and have learned from their mistakes, people that have sinned, and by the grace of God, they've been able to turn away from their sin so that they can extract the wisdom from that situation so that the next generation can move very, very quickly, avoiding the pit holes, avoiding the roadblocks, avoiding the things that would try to trip them up based upon what the previous generation has already been through. That's good, yeah. Say, I don't have to do it, I don't have to do it. To go through it. To go through it. I can listen to somebody else and learn the lesson. Come on. It is foolish to believe I have to do it to go through it, particularly when you're sitting right next to me and you've already done it and you've already went through it and you have the benefit of what I do not have. Amen. Listen. So the first role, the first principle we see about wisdom is somebody has to impart it and somebody has to listen to it. Yeah. We must know what season of life we are in. Some of us are in a listening season, but we're trying to be in an, in an imparting season. And the way we get out of a listening season into an imparting season for others is we must learn how to listen first. <laughs> Say, listening is a skill. Listening is a skill. Amen. Verse 3, when I was a boy in my father's house, still tender and the only child of my mother, he taught me and said, lay hold of my words with all your heart. In other words, he said, yep, I'm that guy and you need to listen to me. <laughs> Some of us, we need to get the boldness of the Lord to begin to tell people, no, you need to listen to me. Because for some people, that's what they need to hear because too many things are occupying their thought life and their emotional life. 
because we have some people that are loners. They are so used to listening to themselves. They are so used to being outside of relationships. They have peer relationships. As a matter of fact, they do well in peer relationships because in peer relationships, we're all on the same level and I can choose if I will or won't listen. Teach. That's it right there. That's it. But some of us struggle in relationships where we are no longer peers and it appears that I am not a peer with you. Jesus. Lord. Because if you're my peer, then I make a decision. Teach. That's it. But if you're a father, the decision has already been made. Jesus. Say the decision is <laughs> I heard a hey. <laughs> Say the decision has already been made. Already made. Listen, he goes back into his childhood. So wisdom, listen, God was preparing him to be a king when he was a child. <laughs> Not by giving him images of a throne, not by telling him how wise he was going to be, not by telling him how much wealth he was going to have, not by telling him how great his name was going to be, but simply in his childhood years, in his formative years, just simply seeing if he could listen. And when I look at great people today, one of the characteristics, one of the traits that I see in great people is that at some point in the journey, they finally learned how to listen. Oh, Jesus. If my father is listening, he is at, he's probably running around the house, amen? Because this brother <laughs> gave my father the blues because I would not listen. <laughs> Listening will save our lives. Sin will destroy our lives. Listening will save our lives. I would be worried if the only person I listen to is me or my peers. Wow. Yes, Lord. I would be concerned if I don't have multiple people in my life in multiple arenas because a lot of times, listen, we're bigger than the space we live in. That's why some of us need multiple mentors to help cultivate what God has put on the inside yes. of us. Amen. Amen. Say we're bigger than the space we live in. We're bigger than the space we live in. But we will stay in that place if we don't surround ourselves with people who are further. Yes. Wow. Listen, my son. So what, what, what does he say here? Right? Home is where the heart is, right? Next slide. Listen. The first thing he says is, hear me in your heart. I love this. This, this is so good. Hear me. Yeah, you're going to hear a lot of things. There's going to be a lot of voices. There's going to be a lot of things going on. But I need you to focus. I need you to filter. And I need you to hear me in the midst of all the other voices. Hear me. No, hear me. No, 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 no. Hear me. That's not arrogant. That is love. Only love has the confidence to tell a child, no, hear me. <laughs> no, see them, be aware of them, but right. hear me. Right. Amen. I'm so thankful that my sons, even though they're older, they still hear me in the midst of what they're hearing. Mm -hmm. See, it takes confidence in God to tell your children to hear you because, listen, if we're walking with the Lord, they're really not hearing you. They're hearing what God has done through you in your experiences. Yes. Yes. Say, hear me. Hear me. Hear me in your heart. The second thing he says is, don't just hear me in your heart. Receive me into your heart. In other words, make sure that there is a strong foundation of love and security and value. Mm -hmm. Because wherever people are loved, wherever people are secure, and wherever people are valued, you will always see the trait of listening. Mm -hmm. should, should, should we say that again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wherever people are loved, now, now this works <laughs> positively and <laughs> negatively. Let's be clear, let's set some parameters here. Wherever people are loved, wherever people are made to feel secure, wherever people are valued, we will see them listening even if what they're listening to is wrong. 
Some people listen to the wrong thing because they're looking for what they didn't get. Yeah, right. That's why the church is such a blessing, because the church is the one institution on the planet where your childhood could be jacked up. My childhood could be jacked up. My childhood could be full of pain, heartbreak, rejection, abandonment, and I can come into God's kingdom, and he can reverse the time. Amen. He can quicken his work, and I can learn lessons sooner, even if I'm in my 30s. Even if I didn't have the right parenting foundation, I can get it now because I come not just in the church, not just under the lordship of Christ, but I keep bringing myself under the authority of apostolic fathers and prophetic mothers. And I can get it. Wow. Hear me in your heart. In your heart. Hear me in the place where you talk on the inside, mm -hmm. hear me in the place where you make this. Because listen, 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 here's, here's very important. Most of our decisions are made on the inside before they are ever manifest on the outside. That's good. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Let's be practical. <laughs> you can tell when somebody likes you in a few minutes. Mm-hmm. And you can kind of tell how far the relationship is going. You know it in your heart. You can tell when somebody don't want to be bothered with you. <laughs> now you can trick yourself. <laughs> right, teach pastor. And, but here's the good news with that. There are how many people, how many people on the planet? Billions? <laughs> right. That means I got a billion choices. <laughs> Come on. Right. So I don't have to be mad if one or 10 or 100 or 1,000. Right. That means I got uh, a million, million, quadrillion more choices. <laughs> That's why I don't have to get hung up on one relationship, one experience. Watch this, one set of parenting. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me that the God we serve is so small that he can only deal with me based upon one parent or one set of parenting or one parenting experience? Jesus. Come on, we, we, we think too small. Mm -hmm. God can father us in our 40s. Mm -hmm. God can mother us in our 50s. Mm -hmm. if, if we want to listen. <laughs> Hear me in your heart. Receive me in your heart. Watch this. Think about me in your heart. At some point, many me has to sit down so a greater me can get me where I need to go. See, it's not that we have a problem with me. We just get stuck on the wrong me. And stuck on the wrong me will always keep me in a small box, a small room, a small relationship, small expectations, small belief systems, and small perspectives. But when many me sits down and makes room for a bigger me outside of me, then me can begin to become who me should be in Christ. I know it's not proper English, but I think we get the point. Think about me in your heart. Meditate on me. Ask questions wow. of me. Maybe your parents told you you talk too much. <laughs> Guess what? We're in a new kingdom with a new king that loves our voice, that created our voice, and can't wait to hear from us. Mm -hmm. So maybe we've got to learn how to talk our way into a rested place where we can begin to believe something different. Mm -hmm. wow. See, everything is new, but it still seems the same on the inside of us. Think about me. Come on, it takes courage to tell that, right? Because yeah. you can tell people, think about me, and the first thing they want to say is, who are you? Right. <laughs> but again, it's not so much about who I am, it's about where you're trying to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not about me. It's about gleaning from my experiences. It's about gleaning from our God, who, by the way, has done something in my life, too. You ever feel like, some people make you feel like God hasn't done anything in your life? <laughs> 
Their listening will make you wonder if God has done anything. You, 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 they make you forget the testimonies, amen? You look around, you start asking yourself, well, has God done anything in my life? Trust me in your heart even when you think you know the right thing. Trust in me even when you think you know the right thing. I know what I see, but tell me what I'm looking at. Jesus. Give me your attention. Give me your focus. Give me your time. And give me your energy. Oh yeah, did I forget to say first? <laughs> And then our flesh starts screaming, well, what about me? If I give you all of this, yeah, I want to make sure I brought that in because that's the person that's been talking while I'm talking. <laughs> and sometimes that voice tries to be the louder voice, but that's really the voice of folly. Because the voice of folly will make sure that I never get into wisdom because in wisdom, the voice of folly has to sit down. So folly will always make sure to give me what I want so that wisdom looks unattractive. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Give me your attention. Give me your focus. Give me your time and give me your energy first. This is what it means when we say that Jesus is Lord. One of the clearest ways that we can identify if Jesus is Lord is simply this. Do I listen to him, not do I hear him? That's why he tells us on the front end that he forgave us and the Father shows us the price that he paid to forgive us so that this will work in our hearts so that in the moment of decision making, we will choose to go his way, knowing that we have many choices. I don't, I don't really think it's listening if we only have one choice. <laughs> mm, amen. I'll stop right here. If I don't have more than one choice, then I'm really not being forced to listen. Good. It isn't until I have multiple choices. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Right, because if I only got one choice, I don't have to listen. I only got one choice. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Listen, my sons, to a father and a mother's instruction. Which means, parents, we got to have something to say. <laughs> they need to see us in the book. They need to see us on our knees. They need to see us walking out something so that they will at least be curious. <laughs> we should make them want to ask us something. There should at least be a nickel's worth of something on the inside that should at least arrest them enough to say, you know what, I know I'm tripping in. They're doing it right. So let me at least ask, even if I don't know if I'm going to do it. Because God is always a God of generations, not individuals. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Whatever God has done in me and my wife's life, he really had Noah's generation in mind. Mm -hmm. He wants Lorenzo Carlton and Miles to eat and eat good. Mm -hmm. wow. But his thinking is so much further than us. Listen, my sons, to a father's instructions. Notice what he said here. Pay attention, and then we'll gain understanding. I said, <laughs> one story. <laughs> when I was going to school, y'all, I was such a misunderstood child. <laughs> I had Bobby's world for real. <laughs> My teacher would be at the blackboard teaching, and I was outside on the playground. <laughs> 
Oh man, I was in other countries. <laughs> I mean, I was the daydream king. <laughs> I mean, I'll leave a conversation on you now. We might be talking about before stuff. I'm gone. Like, <laughs> The reason there's such a lack of understanding because there's no paying attention. There's no real focus. What we focus on is what we understand. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. Hmm. Now here's what's funny. There's only one person that knows that the learning is sound, and that's the parent, not the child. That's good. So by faith, the child has to agree even though they don't understand. Because the teaching will not become sound in them until another season of their life. So by faith, they have to agree this teaching is sound. I see it in your life. I see it in your decision making. I see it in your choices. And I humble myself under the teaching even though I see your imperfections because where you're going prepares me to get there even in the midst of your imperfections. Because the thing that we focus on is the thing that we'll have faith for. And we can focus on a person's imperfections and miss their wisdom. Hear me in your heart. Receive me in your heart. Think about me in your heart. Ask questions of me in your heart. Trust me in your heart. Give me your attention, focus, time, and energy. Well, when does it ever become about me? <laughs> That's the problem, it doesn't. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying we should overdose and just go to the other extreme, but this need to be seen a lot of times is what can drive us to listen to the wrong things. Good. Home is where the heart is. For some of us, I don't know everybody's situation and circumstances. I don't know what kind of home everybody was raised in. But here's what I do know. When we come into the kingdom, we literally get a brand new slate. We are forgiven. We have a new identity. We have new parenting. We literally have the ability to overcome every obstacle, every hindrance everything that we either had or did not have if we will cultivate the skill of listening. Hmm. Some of us even struggle with being forgiven because we don't listen. Wow. Wow. God tells us he's forgiven us of all of our sins, but we're still listening to the voice of our past. Mm -hmm. Teach. And we don't think that listening is important. And so God keeps telling us, I've forgiven you. I've forgiven you. And then questions keep rising from our flesh. Well, why would you forgive me? Or how could you forgive me? Or you don't know what I've done. Or you don't know. And, God, and God's not even looking at that. He's looking past that at the work of his son. Yes. That's why if we can get that we're forgiven, we can really be changed. Home is where the heart is. Last slide. Last slide. Listen. Hear me. Receive me. Think about me. Ask questions of me. Trust me. Give me your attention, focus, time, and energy. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray today that no matter where we are in our journey with you, no matter what has taken place up until this point, 
Today can be a day of reckoning by simply listening. Today can be the beginning of us deciding that we will turn away from just listening to ourselves and others who really don't have a track record with you, but that we will begin to listen clearly to you, that we will begin to listen for you, and that we will allow you to lead us and grow us. Because we understand by your grace that wherever we sow is always where we'll grow. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your favor and for your life the life of Christ. Thank you for the gift of listening that you've given the church, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Word of God, that you would be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wasn't that a powerful word this morning? <laughs> amen. I was uh, over there in my quiet time listening to Pastor and and Proverbs in 16 and 20, it says, whoever gives heed to instruction prospers. Whoever gives heed, that means pay attention and takes, takes notice to instruction prospers. And blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Whoever takes heed, whoever gives heed, whoever pays attention. Uh, and it, it's so important in the, these last days that we take heed and we pay attention and we listen, amen? Because if God cannot get our attention by instruction, he will get our attention by experience. And there are some experiences I do not want. If you walk through that, I don't want it. Especially if it's bad. I'm like, nope, I'm good. So he's like, I want to give it to you by instruction versus the experience. Amen. So we need to really take heed in these last days. We need to take heed. We need to really, really listen. Amen. God, I know what I see, but tell me what I'm looking at. God, I know what my, what's coming out of the natural, but Lord, let me see behind the scenes. And we can save ourselves a lot of heart, you know, a lot of uh, tears and heartache if we would just heed God's warning. If we would listen to what God has said. I, I think back over my life and like, Lord, had I listened. I mean, just listen a little bit. <laughs> I mean, God's like, I was trying to tell you. And sometimes even God will send people to give us instruction. And that's why we need to have a listening heart, amen, because sometimes we think that, you know, many of us, I'll just use me, we, we know everything. And we, we won't say that we know everything, but sometimes by our actions, they can't tell me nothing. Who are they supposed to be? And we might not let it come off our lips, but that little heart, it starts speaking. <laughs> Who they're supposed to be? They're not no, look, they're not nobody. They ain't nobody. But God is like, no, in this season, son, in this season, daughter, I want you to listen. You need to hear my voice, heed my voice. And sometimes you're like, well, God, how do we know if it's you talking to us? Because I struggle with that sometimes. I'm like, God, is that you talking to me? But he's not going to go outside of his word either. And God, he will confirm his word, Amen. Because if we're asking God and we humble ourselves, God, show me which way to go. As a good father, why would he not show us which way to go? Why would he, why would he not make it plain? If we're coming to him and asking him, amen? As a good father, he will tell us which way to go, what to do, what not to buy, what person to stay away from, amen? God will tell us because he always has our best interest at heart. And he sees everything, amen? He knows the beginning from the end. And he wants us to have a good and a prosperous life. Amen? Amen. I pray that you are all blessed this morning. Now is our portion to give. If you are blessed this morning, if you want to be a blessing this morning and give back into God's kingdom, there's two ways you can sow. Um, the first one is mobile through Cash App. That's the uh, dollar sign, the money sign. And advancing God's kingdom, amen. You can sow that way, or you can go to our website at agkm.net, amen. And you can sow that way this morning. And you can also set up if you want to reoccurring giving, amen. Either way, you know, we give back to God. He always gives more back to us 
than when we've sown. Amen. Even in your giving, listen to God's instruction on that, of what to give, how to give. God will teach you how to give the way he wants you to give, and he'll also teach you how to sow and stack and save. Amen. He'll give us wisdom even with our finances because God wants you to prosper in every area of your life. I'm asking God now, Lord, okay, what do we do? Because, you know, when we've been home a little, I said, God, you know, being home for the most part during COVID, we've been able to save a little more. And I'm like, okay, God, what do I do with this extra? Instead of burning through it, do I need another outfit? I can answer myself and say no. <laughs> I'm going to ride my closet. But, you know, God wants, you know, we can ask God, what do I do with this? How do you want me to sew in this area? Because I'm telling you, when God tells you to do something, he already has something else in mind, what's he, what he wants to give back to you. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for the seeds that you've given us on today to sow back into your kingdom, Lord God. We bless you. We honor you, Lord God. We thank you that, that, we, that we are sowing into good ground. We thank you that we have, we have listened to your instruction of what to give and how to give, Lord God. And we thank you right now how you'll give it back to us, Lord, pressed down, shaking together, and running over, Lord God. And we thank you right now that every need that your children have, you've already met it, Lord God. And for that, we just say thank you. And we just give back to you that portion of what you've given to us already. And we honor you, not just with our lips, God, we honor you also in our giving, Lord God. And we just thank you right now, and we bless you. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we give you thanks, praise. And amen. Amen. Isn't our God awesome this morning? Isn't he awesome? You know, as our pastor comes back, I, you know, just, you know, ask God to show you um, even the tracks. Sometimes uh, we see things or we don't, or we want to buy something or we think it's a good deal or we, you know, God even, he wants, he, he wants to be a part of our everyday lives and every one of our decisions. Amen. He wants to be a part of that. He doesn't want to be left out of that. He said, ask me, and I'll give you wisdom if you should move here. Ask me, I'll give you wisdom if you should buy that. Ask me, I will give you wisdom of what you should do. He said, just listen to me. Just listen to me, because I have your best interest at heart. Just listen to me. He said, just listen to me, amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for a hearing heart, amen, a listening heart. And we thank you the grace that you give us in terms of all of your provision for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. uh, me and my wife have entered into a, a fresh season in terms of communion. We're, we're taking communion daily, um, but God is wanting to let us see more in terms of what the, the bread and the juice represent. So I want to encourage you. If you're not currently taking communion, begin to, in your own way, we've been using oyster crackers and grape juice, begin to press into more of what Jesus accomplished for us as it relates to communion. Mm -hmm. He said his body is real food. He said his blood is real drink. He said the person that feeds on him will live because of him. There is an aspect of life that is contained in the bread and the juice based upon the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So again, I want to encourage you today, friends, if you're not taking communion, begin to seek the Lord about taking it daily, even multiple times throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So much has been opened up to us as a result of walking through COVID. It doesn't have to be a one-time event. It doesn't have to be something yeah. that we do monthly. It can literally be a revelation that will bring health to our body, healing to our bones. Yeah. Think about it, the life of Christ in us, man, we can be strong, we can be healthy, we can be focused based upon what Jesus has done. Yeah. This is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, amen. Mm -hmm. This is why I have uh, these colors on, amen. And so I know a number of people that have dealt with breast cancer, and so we want to encourage uh, people to have their mammograms. Uh, men also have breast cancer. I know the numbers are lower than women, but take care of yourself, amen. Yes, Inspect amen. yourself when you're taking your showers. Do these things, mm -hmm. have physicals, 
Amen. Use the resources that God has provided for us. Amen. Yes. Amen. Let's not find ourselves on the other end being fear-driven where we don't want to know anything. Yeah. Let's watch our God do powerful works of healing, yes. even in our bodies. Amen. Mm -hmm. I thank you for your grace today. And I just release a word of healing over our city. Mm -hmm. I thank you, Lord, that a word of reconciliation would go out into the airwaves over the city of Lansing. Yes, God. That there would be racial reconciliation, that there would be community reconciliation, mm -hmm. that there would even be reconciliation in our political parties, Father. I thank you for singing over our city. Thank you. I thank you that you're singing. Friends, can you hear it? Are we listening for the voice of the Lord? I thank you that the citizens of this city will be full of joy, will be full of favor. Mm -hmm. I thank you, Lord, that the citizens of this city would hear the song of the Lord. I thank you that Lansing is an attractive hub for businesses. Thank I thank you that people aren't moving out, but businesses want to move here. Yes, Relationships God. want to be strong here, Lord. Yes, and that God. this is a thriving, vibrant city. Yes, Lord. Because our Lord is God. Thank you, Father. Because this is a hub where the rule of Christ can reign. Yes, Father. And so I bless what you're doing today. We bless your people. The Lord bless us and the Lord keep us. Yes, God. The Lord make his face shine upon us. The Lord give us his peace. Mm -hmm. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And we bless our friends. Friends, if you have prayer requests, you can always go to our website. If you have needs, we love you. And we bless what the Lord is doing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.